Welcome to another episode of ResX, an indigenous lifestyle show for everyone. My name is Cadmus Delorme. And I'm your co-host, Erin Goodpipe. We have a great lineup for today's episode, guys. Uh, first up, we have the Fred Sasakamoose Youth Camp. Do you know who, which NHL team Fred Sasakamoose played for? Ooh, give me a moment. Kaka! Winged one. It's like, <laughs> I remember. Say that again. Kaka! I like that. Mm. The Chicago Blackhawks. Chicago Blackhawks, all right. Also on this episode, the University of Regina Indigenous Students Association Round Dance. As well, we have the Segeo Walk Storytellers Festival. Can you guys say that with me? Segeo Walk. Do you know what that means, Cadmus? Ooh, Segeo Walk. Storytelling. Samak a pi. Segeo Walk. Remember that, guys. Let's now sit. Storytell. All right. Also, on this episode, we will be interviewing filmmaker Candy Renee Fox. As well, we have a music performance by the Snake Oil Salesman. So stay tuned, guys. We got lots coming at you. Okay, let's get started. Listen up. Our first show was the Fred Sasakamus Youth Camp hosted at the University of Regina in May. Grade 11s come together with a couple days of activities and sports, leadership, and so on. But ultimately what they're doing is their nation building. Let's check it out. But it's a great honor. It's uh, something that I think it's always nice that, uh, that I could see University of Regina that has uh, a big play in, in, into my life. You know, to, for the younger people to, to uh, you know, the future. I think that uh, the focus is right now, and, uh, you know, not on me, but on just the young people. And I think it's really dedicated. And uh, I, I enjoyed myself as a uh, university to be here, to be named after me, the program that is named that uh, in the future it will grow. This is now our fourth year and um, the last two years we've had waiting lists for students to get on the, um, into the program. Uh, so the um, word is getting out, I think, that um, we offer something a little different that um, where the youth can be inspired. A lot of these youth have heard of him and maybe never met him, so it's a great opportunity for them as well um, to connect with someone of his esteem um, from their own communities. Fred's been involved in a number of our activities um, in the faculty and he's been involved with the program from at the start and um, he's just he's got such a great story and his passion is the youth and he really does advocate for and um, he's he said you know the youth keep him going and so what better way to kind of provide a legacy for a man who's done so much for Aboriginal sport and Aboriginal youth and youth in general. Oh, the message has always been clear to me to, to you know, that they go home with what you call it, a, a, a better understanding that uh, these young people are needed for, for our communities to, to serve our communities and also to educate the young people when they go back. I think that's a strong message that uh, we forecast ourselves to uh, for leadership program, and that's the way we look at it. And I think they should be, you know, to dedicate to the, you know, the uh, the situation, what it's what it's like in the reserve. Uh, I decided to attend the Fritz Zegmer's leadership program because I wanted to find myself as an individual, as a leader. I wanted to see my qualities and who I am. I wanted to see my perspective of other people, and I want other people to see me as a great person. What I want is for them to um, to realize that they've got the power to create change um, in their communities and use their interest in sport and recreation to do that, um, develop their own leadership skills, but also create opportunity for others in their community that um, may not otherwise be there. Um, so really they're the change makers and to help empower them to be that and be more confident. The mentors, um, help to keep the group together. They help to engage the youth um, in, a, in a smaller and meaningful way um, outside of the big group activities that we do. Um, and our goal is that the mentors be part of the youth's 
um, continued advancement in their community in the next year so that they stay connected and that the mentors can help them um, bring into um, from idea into fruition um, what they're trying to do and accomplish. Dr. Jolie Sasakamus had brought us in and started to inspire us to be role models for the youth. So it kind of started like that and then we just took the passion together mm -hmm. while well, there's a group of four of us and we just rolled with the ball from there and set some goals and some visions and uh, we're just going to keep marching to get those. They're, they're the ones who like inspire us, so we, we definitely have to um, push, keep on pushing, and we already had some, some kids that came from last year, so it was great. What I would recommend is the great, the great people here, great staff, they're very respectful, they're very inspiring, and this place is just, it's an honor to come here. So what we're here to do is we're here to create um, healthy bonds and relationships with the youth that we are that are in the camp with us, and we want to extend that leadership role and that mentorship and take it outside of the camp of the three-day camp and make it a lifelong bond so that these kids can look at us as healthy role models, healthy Indigenous role models and Indigenous leaders and we can help inspire them to hone their leadership skills so that they can go and continue that same aspect and take it into the field, back home into their community and as they become 18, 19 and grown adults they can continue to mentor other youth as well. Wow, Washte, it's always great to see legends like Fred Sasakamus come out and give back to the community and the youth. Our next story covers the Indigenous Students Association Round Dance, hosted at the University of Regina, which unites youth and elders. You guys want to check it out? Stay tuned. within this university a lot of the people here come here to study but yet they only hear about First Nations they don't really actually get to go and see so this being in this hallway they can actually walk by and witness it you know just for, uh, firsthand as a stick man from what I was told by my uncles is that you're the one that uh, gets the dancers dancing you know you make sure everything that's in that circle is going right you know, it's going the way it's supposed to go. You know, uh, they usually have a stick man and a whip man, you know, to control that floor. That's what you're doing. You're controlling that floor, making sure that the round ends go smoothly. Even the people in Saskatchewan, you know, the faculty, the students, they don't get to see what First Nations people, even though they're amongst, we're amongst each other, you know, uh, they, only, they only hear of the Indians dancing, but they never really understand why we dance or why we have these certain functions. So for them to have it in this university, yeah, it's very important. You know, it, it shows that, that we want you to be a part of it. You know, otherwise, if we didn't want you to be a part of it, we would have it secret, you know, we would, we would go off somewhere else and have it, but it's a good place to have it, university. In the indigenous way, um, our culture, um, our ceremony is conducted as, um, we started out with a pipe ceremony so we conduct the pipe ceremonies um, to pray to our ancestors and pray to the Creator. And the feast acknowledges the spirits that help bring up our prayers up to the Creator. Um, and we ask them to come and eat with us. And then right after the feast, we begin the round up. What we do throughout the entire year is that we teach uh, students, faculty, and staff here at the University of Regina our culture, our ways, our protocols, our outlook, our worldviews, our, our total spirituality. So we go around teaching people, we're spreading our knowledge to them to acknowledge us uh, as First Nations of Canada. And a lot of people are amazed by the way we do things and the reason why we do it. So tonight, there's a lot of students walking by, there's mixed crowd, mixed audience of uh, people who've never been to a round dance before, people who have never been in um, a pipe ceremony before, people who have never uh, witnessed a feast before. So it's also like a, an eye opener to other people to acknowledge why we do things the way that we do and why we hold the ceremony here at the University of Regina is to teach everyone 
um, who is willing to learn about our culture. That's my swing and sway at a round dance. The University of Regina Indigenous Students Association round dance. Great round dance. When you hear about this round dance next year, come to the round dance. Even if you don't want to swing and sway, just being at a round dance, you get such a great feeling. And a round dance is for everyone. Our next story is Rezex was at the week-long Sakewiwak Storytellers Festival, which was, you got it, storytelling. We were there, check it out. There's only a few festivals in Canada that have, um, have the kind of history that uh, Sakewiwak has. So, you know, to be invited uh, back uh, year after year uh, to a festival that has the history that Sagewiwak does um, is, a, is, a, is a complete honor. Our art is, uh, is dynamic. It's, uh, it's never been better. And uh, we're given this opportunity in front of us today because of those that came before us. So, um, so it's our responsibility to come here. You're coming to be a part of something that is actually creating history. So, um, you know, to come here to uh, be a part of this is, is uh, it's kind of what you do it for, you know. It's a, and if, if I may be so uh, cliche or pretentious, it's a, a bit of a dream come true because, again, you're, you're, you're creating history with all these artists that are working in a really, really dynamic and uh, original way. And all artists in all mediums can add something positive. And that's your job, that's your responsibility. So uh, young artists uh, often think of this as an easy job. We go to art school, we go to theater school, we go to film school because we think it's gonna be easy. But in fact, being an artist is, is, is way harder than working a nine to five. This is a 24 hour a day job where if you get an opportunity, you drop everything and you go. And um, that's your responsibility, you know, as a leader in your field. And uh, all of us artists, all artists in all mediums are leaders in their fields in that way. And uh, it, right now it's all hands on deck. We need everybody working all the time towards that, that greater good. So we all need to realize we're a small part of a big circle. And uh, that's why they should come here. You know, we're all, we're all, we should all be contributing to that um, that bigger circle. For more information on Sikewiwak Artist Collective, check out their website online. Sikewiwak. As well, I have a special interview with Candy Renee Fox. Don't go anywhere. Growing up, I was always identified with the masculine. Um, I was always doing the thing that, that the boys wanted. I always wanted the clothes the boys wanted. I always wanted to hang with the boys. Um, it was very hard for me to um, accept that there was these defined roles. And I remember as a kid being forced to wear a dress for a family portrait with all the cousins and I was just crying because I had my suit jacket and tie and I wanted to wear that. My queen name, my Indian name, is Brown Rock Woman. And when I used to ask my parents about that, because my my older siblings, three of them, they had Indian names. And then I said, well, I like an Indian name too. I said, because it helps them when they get sick and things like that, it helps them. And it's a very, powerful thing when you have an Indian name. And when I got mine, 
the one that gave me, told me, told me when I needed help, like not just for anything, but for serious, it's for, he told me to ask, to call on my spirit helper whenever I needed his help. It was like my parents' divorce. It's like the whole family is divorced. Um, I, I really don't know like how it affects them, but in, in my point of view, it's like I wish we could just get back together like how, how it was. Like that's, I grew up on Papikasi's re Reserve with my family down there and not being able to like knowing that my cookum is still alive i can't go see her and it's like my brother nathan he respects my cookum enough to respect her and how she feels towards the whole situation and it seems like that like it's kind of like um just like a loss of communication, something that is important with family and not having that anymore is just different. There's Luke, Mark, me, and Matthew. Welcome back, everyone. ResX would like to warmly welcome Candy Renee Fox. Candy, did you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Yep, um, I'm 30 years old. I'm from the Paipot First Nation, which is uh, 30 minutes away from Regina. Um, I've just recently convocated from the University of Regina with my um, film degree, uh, so Bachelor's of Fine Arts I just received, and yeah. Wow. So you're an artist, Candy, and a filmmaker. Did you want to tell us a little bit about what inspired you to become a filmmaker? Um, I think, well, there's a couple things that inspired me. Um, I think when I was younger, watching films and things like that were just a way to get away from the world or escape. It was a way for me to, to dream. And I think as I um, got older, I realized that storytelling was something I wanted to do and it was mm -hmm. it was a way for me to express myself. Um, it was a way to tell stories that were important to me as an Indigenous person and also think uh, be, to be able to tell stories that reflected uh, my community and where I come from and, and just important stories that weren't necessarily out there from a Native perspective. Ah, okay. So, um, you are an Indigenous female filmmaker. Did you want to tell us a little bit about your experiences with that? Are there any issues um, going forward with that? Um, <clears throat> well, I just got out of film school, so I haven't really, like I'm still emerging as a filmmaker. Um, one, of the thing, one of the things that I did uh, find that was a little bit difficult in school was um, like finding people to work with. Um, I think I was one of the only Native people that uh, graduated with my class. Uh, I initially was going to do a dramatic film when I, uh, for my fourth year project, but I couldn't find anybody who wanted to be on my crew, and it was going to be a dramatic feature. So what I did was um, I just changed it and I decided to go with a documentary film. And with that, I did everything. I did the, the writing, the, uh, the filming, the camera work, and the editing and all the post-production things. So, yeah. Deadly. Deadly. So you recently made top 10 for the Toronto International Film Festival. Did you want to share a little bit about that experience? Yeah. Um, my fourth year film was called Backroads. It was a documentary. Um, the story uh, revolves around um, family abuse, uh, a specific story uh, involving Camelia Stonechild and, and her story about um, how that destroyed her life and mm -hmm. uh, her survival of abuse. And 
The film ended up being chosen as one of the top 10 films, student films in Canada by Toronto International Film Festival. So that was really amazing because the reason why we did that film um, was we wanted to get the story out there and give a voice to people who didn't necessarily um, have a voice uh, or they had reasons for not sharing the, their own experiences. Um, so yeah, when we went to TIFF, it was, it was a really great experience. Um, I got to sit on a panel with other documentary filmmakers and I was one of the only students on that panel. And I got to share um, what inspired my craft and just I got to share um, my own story with other people in, in an audience in Toronto. So that was really great. And yeah, I, I just got to experience that whole you know, I got to meet other um, producers, executives, and other people within the industry. So it was, it was really um, fulfilling and amazing experience. And yeah, I'm right. really proud. So that's great to hear, Candy. Well, thank you so much for sharing some of your story with us, and thank you for your time. Hey Rider fans, I'm Rod Peterson. Join me and a panel of Rider experts each week for In the Huddle, Saskatchewan's only primetime television show on Canada's team. Join me and my panel of Rider experts for all the latest on the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Brought to you by Bennett Dunlop Ford. For the best online dealership experience, it's honestly better at BennettDunlopFord.com. In the Huddle, Tuesdays at 7, only on Access 7. Another episode is coming to a close. Ah, the lineup was so great today. Uh, I just wanted to make a comment about it. Um, I wish I had these when I was younger. So the Fred Sacramus camp, all the various uh, Indigenous um, members coming out and the youth being able to have these events is, is great. I wish I had this when I was younger. As well as uh, the ISA, so the Indigenous Students Association, um, the round dance they put on is groundbreaking. It's, a, it's at the U of R and it's there for everyone uh, to participate, non-Indigenous and Indigenous alike. So I'm really excited that our community is, you know, making, making breaks for this. You know, the University of Regina is inclusive of all cultures. Mm -hmm. And to have this round dance right in the center, it meant a lot. You know, the swing and sway, the Indian way, as they would say. You know, the round dance is a big part of Regina. It's a big part of the community and many other round dances. You see the same round dance family. <laughs> and uh, you know which ones are snaggable? <laughs> yeah. Not yeah. this one. Oh, no, off the market. Don't yeah, look at yeah, this no, guy. horse blinds. So, <laughs> and then, you know, back to the Francis Sakamus. Uh, you know, like you said earlier in the episode, you know, giving back to the youth. You know, I helped out with the Fred Sasakamoose before, you know, and as a golfer, one of my past is, um, you know, you give back to the youth. So Fred mm -hmm. Sasakamoose does a great job. We need more people like yeah. that in the communities. For sure, for sure. And the Sikewu Walk Storytellers Festival um, is another festival event that gives back to the community. And I love just seeing all of our storytellers come out because as Indigenous people, we have so much story to tell. I was taught that as little kids you were told many stories. Mm -hmm. uh, stories if, uh, if you were Cree, if you were Dakota. And these stories would not have an answer, but there's a learning lesson in the story. And that's where the Sikewiwak comes from. So it's been deep in our roots for many generations, so. Ah, and one of our storytellers, Candy Renee Fox, so glad to have her working for ResX and having this interview with her. I learned so much from her. She's quite the artist, so. Candy Renee Fox. Did I say her name right? Renee? Renee. Renee. Candy Renee, Renee, Renee Fox. Undergrad, University of Regina, First Nations University. One of Setting the bar to a whole new level. Education. She's foxy. <laughs> foxy lady. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. And finally, what are we? We have one more to close the show. We have Regina's own, the snake, the snake oil snake. salesman. Enjoy. Lying on a mattress on the floor in the basement in a bad part of town. Weighing all my options, my heirs, I'm in trouble, I'm in this moment now. My life ain't no picnic, no business, ain't one worker like me. My lady's beside me, my baby's inside. This is my bed, this is 